Hello! I decided to do a first impressions video of some gouache that I bought recently. So it's not my first time using gouache. When I was in college I took an art elective class and our instructor wanted us to try using gouache as a medium when painting certain things. So that was pretty much my first introduction to using this kind of opaque watercolor. Now the gouache that we used in this class in that class it was the Windsor and Newton's designer gouache and so it kind of pretty set a high standard to the gouache I like to use. In recent years I did try out the Reeves gouache, just that student grade kind, and it I didn't meet my expectations. I wanted originally to use it just for practicing more traditional watercolor and gouache paintings, but I did not like the consistency of certain colors. So I decided to go for some a different kind of brand that was also that was still artist grade like the Windsor Newton, and Newton uh, Designers gouache, but not as expensive because that particular brand is is pretty pricey. So I decided to go with the M Graham artist gouache, which you can see here, and the colors that I got, which it's kind of hard to see the text, but I'll go ahead and tell you the colors that I bought. I got cadmium red, alizarin and crimson. Raw Umber, Burnt Sienna, Yellow Ochre, Cadmium Yellow, Sap Green, and Thalo Cyanine Blue. So I just kind of got colors that match the Reeves colors that I already had in my old chart, which you can see at the top there. And I've tried to go for more earthy tones because I, my, although I do want to try painting different things, what I mainly like to do is portraits. So I like to have a good variety of earthy tones, colors that I can blend easily for using different skin tones and such. So you'll be able to see the differences here in the new palette, the new chart that I'm making using the M Graham squash versus the Reeves at the top. I went ahead and added the Windsor Newton colors that I have, that I still have actually from my college days, just to keep everything in order. So far I had a really good impression of this gouache, unlike the Reeves in which different colors have different consistencies, like you can see the bright green at the top, it just did not have a very good consistency when I opened it, versus the colors at the bottom, which tend, it, they came out opaque straight from the tube, and except for a few which I kind of messed up because I didn't, I added a little bit of water at the beginning. For the most part they all turned out really well. I liked how they dried and how they came out. And then I will have a speed uh, painting video at the end showing you how I tried out these different colors and you'll see the final result. So according to the M. Graham's website the gouache is made with only a binding pigment of pure honey and gum arabic. It doesn't have extra fillers like chalk or white, which a lot of lesser quality gouaches tend to have, which I thought was really nice because, you know, the less filler the better. That kind of brings me to the point of, so although I do like the Windsor Inns designer gouache, one thing that I noticed over the years with the gouache that I had got several years ago is how the binding pigment will or the binder will separate from the pigment and it'll gather at the top so if you don't use the gouache for a while you'll notice it immediately when you try opening some gouaches that's before they it reaches the drying stage which a lot of my Windsor Newton paints have done for example not pictured here is the dioxazine purple or the dioxazine violet whatever it's called I still have a good amount of that pigment or that paint in my Windsor and tube, but because it's all dried out, I haven't used it recently. I just need to get it out of the tube and maybe put it in a jar so I can reactivate the color. So I didn't buy purple, a purple color for the M Graham because I want to use that other gouache tube and just reactivate the paint. And also I can mix some of these colors to get the purple that I want. So right now I'm just, I was testing out just the permanent white on top of a uh, raised black 
All right, so here I'm gonna be working on a cute frog painting. I will say, and you'll notice this later on, is that the colors definitely dried out darker in some ways that I expected, some that I didn't. So I wasn't able to get a certain green when it came to the frog itself, and uh, at least to make it close to what the reference picture was like. In the reference picture, the frog was pretty bright green compared to the background. But when I was mixing the paint, when I was trying to use the, I was trying to use a mixture of the cadmium yellow with the sap green, the lemon yellow with the sap green, and then I tried either of those yellows with the phthalo, the primary blue. Uh, the color still tried out, dried out darker than I wanted to, but uh, it was you know, trial and error. I'm sure as I practice more with these colors, I'll be able to get the tones and the values that I want. I did like how I had the background turn out. It was more of a light, more like a watercolor painting than gouache. And although I didn't think it completely fit well with the, the more gouache-like frog, I still liked how I did it. So hopefully as I keep practicing with gouache, because it's been a, it's been a while since I've really done a lot of consistent gouache or even watercolor artwork, you know, hopefully with more practice I'll be able to get my paintings to look how I want them to or reach a level that I feel satisfied with. Maybe never. <laughs> I feel like that's that's the life of an artist. You, you paint something you don't like how it turns out and so you keep trying to make it better and better. You're never satisfied with your own work. So there's not much else for me to say except I really I did like the consistency of the colors. I liked how they really really felt I got I got that creamy texture when using the colors out of the tubes and mixing a little bit with water, not too much. Normally I would put the colors in a palette and then use them later on, but I decided not to do that this time. I decided I was just going to mix the colors that I actually needed for this painting instead of having other colors that I probably wouldn't even end up using for this particular work. So I might try that approach for future stuff. Who knows? Alright, well that's it. Hope you enjoy this lovely frog painting. And you can follow me on various social media which I will post at the bottom. And thanks for watching. <laughs>